Putting an end to sex trafficking, that's the goal of one Jacksonville bill that was passed by local leaders last week. According to the National Human Trafficking Resource Center, Florida ranks third for the highest number of reported cases. And according to JSO, there were 34 human trafficking related arrests and three federal indictments last year. Council member Leanna Cumber introduced the bill to raise awareness about the issue. She joins us now with more on what this means for Northeast Florida. You proposed this bill for a reason. What is that? Yes, well, sex trafficking is a really important issue and it's really critical that we focus as a city on it. The federal government on down from the federal to the state to now the local government is really focused on it. And just so people understand kind of what sex trafficking is, it isn't what Hollywood has made it out to seem um, where people are getting kidnapped and being put into these sex rings. It's any time that someone is put into commercial sex through coercion, through violence, um, and so forth, and isn't able, and someone else is making money off of it. So um, we have a lot of sex trafficking going on right here in Jacksonville. How do you identify trafficking, whether that be sex trafficking, labor trafficking, human trafficking, how do you identify that? So there are a lot of different signs and Homeland Security has a great website called DHS Blue Campaign that lists out various about 10 or 15 signs. But some of those signs are um, people not freely talking when they're in situations, people not making eye contact, um, children not attending school anymore, and um, people not feeling, when you get the feeling that someone's kind of being handled, there's always mm. kind of someone around, that's usually a telltale sign. From your experience, if you are in a situation and you think there's a possibility that trafficking is happening, what should you as an individual do with that other person? So I think the best thing to do is contact the authorities. Um, contact the sheriff's department, contact the fire department. Um, part of this bill, what it does is it requires training in various different areas of the city. It requires training in um, gas stations and convenience stores, strongly encourages the hotels to um, have training throughout the hotels, and also trains city employees who are coming in contact with people on a regular basis, as well as the sheriff's office and the fire department. So really the best thing to do is not to engage, but to contact the authorities. That's so great, great information. It also increases the erotic dancing age in Jacksonville yes. from 18 to 21. Yes, yes, so this is a critical piece of the bill. And the reason behind this is Statistics vary throughout the country on when someone first enters into sex trafficking. Um, there are some statistics that say that that number is as young as 14 in Florida. But the average, if you take the most conservative statistic, that average is 17 years old. And so there is a clear kind of window where there are young children and teenagers who are first being brought into sex trafficking. And so what this bill does is not put them, these most vulnerable populations, put them in these very vulnerable situations, dancing in clubs where a lot of it, a lot of the sex trafficking occurs. So it increases it to 21 for that reason. And given the geographical location of Jacksonville, being on the coast, being in a warm climate, being on 95, that major corridor that runs from South Florida all the way to Maine, it only exacerbates the issue here potentially. It does, and we have, um, one of the other things this bill does is gets us up to speed with most major cities in Florida, so on the um, dancer permit cards. And so previous to the enactment of this bill, we don't right now have any dancer work permit cards. Mm -hmm. Most of the other major cities in Florida have them. So if someone can't get one because they're underage, for whatever reason they have a felony, what have you, then they tend to be moved up here because we're seen as a city that it's easy. You just walk into a club and you can dance and no one's watching you and no one's, no one is um, taking account of that. So that will um, help that. We also have major events that exacerbate the problem. Um, you know, TPC girls as young as 15 are brought from all over the country to, um, to be there for sex work. So yeah, we are at a, we are really at a crossroads. I was in Minneapolis during Super Bowl 52 and that was a big issue, a big situation there that the uh, local and state and federal governments were trying to combat was sex trafficking and human trafficking at that time. Yeah.
big sporting events attract that, unfortunately. I know you're on the ground working here in Jacksonville, but recently you experienced something when you traveled to D.C. for work. Yeah, so I went to, on January 31st, I was invited to go to the President's Summit on Human Trafficking at the White House. And that was a great experience, great opportunity for me to talk to people all over the country, from sheriffs from Texas to nonprofits, to talk about what can be done around sex trafficking. And so it was a three-hour summit, and um, it was fascinating, got a lot of information. And then, of course, the president spoke and really spoke about how many federal resources are being put to this issue, which is really important that everyone's now focused on this issue and what we can do to combat it. Bipartisan for sure. Absolutely bipartisan. Thank you so much for coming in. Really great information. For more information, if you see someone you know who has been involved in human trafficking, you can call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at the number you see there on your screen. That is 1-888-373-7888. Again, you can also call your local law enforcement agencies also.